Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Stock Market Recap Saturday. So we are looking at news that happened for the week, and I'm just talking on all subjects of personal finance. So if this is the first time you're joining me, thank you so much for giving me a part of your Saturday. I really appreciate it. Uh, so just a quick update. Uh, these are only going to be half an hour from now, maybe 30 to 45 minutes rather than just an hour. Um, you know, I'm dedicating a lot of time for prepping and they're lasting so long. It's like it's taking up, you know, half my Saturday just to get these things out. Uh, so let's start right here. I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to start with the uh, beloved uh, Finviz uh, <laughs> chart here so you can see what happened over the week very quickly and very visually. So just so you know, this tracks the S&P 500, which you can see over here. I can track more stocks, but I'm just choosing to track the S&P 500 because that's what people have mostly um, their money invested in at this point um, based on the feedback that I get from my users. Uh, so for the week, you can see here that Facebook is up a nice little chunk here at 5%. Uh, Microsoft is up a percent. Apple is still on its downward trend. Uh, I do believe that's because that all the iPhone estimates are getting slashed. People are reaching out to their suppliers and realizing that, hey, you know, these estimates may not be as good as we thought. Um, so if you are part of the informed investor, I just uploaded a very in-depth equity research report on Apple. And I also updated uh, two other equity research reports all came out yesterday December the 14th um, so if you're not in the informed investor which is my private stock market membership group please check that out in the link below uh, it's currently 50% off uh, so the big hit that I want to talk about you guys is Johnson & Johnson uh, you can see that they're down almost 10% on the week and I'll show you exactly why so let's let me make sure I'm sharing my screen here so you can see what I'm seeing perfect uh, so Johnson & Johnson shares plunge after the report that it says it knew about asbestos and its baby powder. So I haven't done um, too much research into this, but I did see this come out on Friday right around lunchtime, uh, Eastern Standard Time for me. And you can see here that their stock tumbled 10% on Friday, uh, wiping out close to $40 billion of its market value. Um, so ultimately, there's been a bunch of lawsuits going on, and I guess some of its talcum powder products, which is meant obviously for babies and uh, infants, uh, caused cancer. Um, so this is insane because it, uh, the, the documents cite that other evidence indicate company executives, mine managers, scientists, and doctors and lawyers all knew about the problem and failed to disclose it to regulators or to the public. So uh, what do you think about that, you guys? So I know a lot of my viewers, they know my stance on those uh, SIN stocks, such as, you know, Altria and Big Tobacco and, you know, Boeing and companies that are involved, like Lockheed Martin, that are involved in unethical practices, um, you know, uh, warmongering, you know, Big Tobacco causing cancer, all that kind of stuff. You know, at what point do you draw the line with your own morals and what you stand for and believe in as a human? Um, obviously, our goal as investors is to maximize our portfolio and to get the biggest return that we can um, with, you know, the least amount of risk as possible. But at some point, for me at least, I morally uh, have to draw the line in terms of, you know, what I support and what I vote for with my dollars. Uh, so I'd like to hear your comments below and also in the chat. Um, so speaking of the chat, let's see who we got in the chat right now. We have about uh, 20 people on the stream, I believe. Uh, we have sales education. What's happening, Marco? Hope all is well. Nice to see you as well. Uh, always a pleasure seeing you every week, buddy. Um, Jose Contreras, uh, send me your link to your private page. Uh, it's in the description below, buddy. Just go to the description and click on the link. It's literally the first uh, link at the top of the description. Um, Simple Logic, how you doing, my friend? Adnan, nice seeing you again. Aravind Kumar, how are you, sir? Nice to see you as always. Uh, Doug Whitaker, how you doing, my friend? Nice to see you, buddy. Um, let's check out FSPHX per um, Simple Logic's question. So let me share my screen here and get it off my big fat talking head. And uh, let's open up here. Just very quickly before we dive into that, I did have a couple tabs lined up with Johnson & Johnson. I just wanted to show everyone in case they didn't see. Uh, so you can see here that if I go to the five-day chart, 
On Thursday, the stock was right around $148 a share, and then boom, uh, right around, there you go, 11.30, right before lunch at Eastern Standard Time, it dropped to 131. So if you, if you believe in Johnson & Johnson, this may actually be good news depending on the long-term implications of this lawsuit. I really don't know because I haven't dug into it that much, um, but this could be a good buying opportunity if you are long or you um, believe in Johnson & Johnson. Uh, so you can see here that they pay a pretty decent dividend at 2.71%. Uh, and right now, the stock you know, almost hit its low um, at this point. Or maybe it was, but what I'm seeing on this chart is 131. So it's a dollar off its low. Um, and you can see at the 52-week low, it was at 118. 52-week high, it was almost at 149. Uh, so the performance of Johnson & Johnson has been pretty steady. They went through a little lull here all throughout 2018. And then they roared back up, and then we'll see what this lawsuit is going to do. As you can see, the sharp drop right here. Uh, so let's look into that stock, that uh, Simple Logic. Let's see here. Sorry, I got my uh, Spotify stuff up. <laughs> that, that stock was Fidelity Select Healthcare Portfolio. So uh, I am a big fan of healthcare. I don't know exactly what's contained in this portfolio as I invest mostly with Vanguard. Um, but we can see here that it's been kind of shaky uh, up and down here. I don't know why that is. It's very cyclical. This could be a great stock to maybe swing trade for a couple months. Uh, and right now may be a good time to buy. So I'm great, glad you brought this to our attention. Uh, it's still relatively high over the past five years. But as we all know, um, you know, we've been in a nine year bull market, even though this is only covering back until December of 2013. So good question. Uh, let's see what they uh, there's a very small dividend yield. If anything, it says it's right around 20 basis points expense ratio. Uh, not too high, but not exactly the cheapest either at 73 percent. Um, so let's see what this stock contains. Let me go into um, the market summary for Fidelity. Okay, so biggest losers this week, Johnson Johnson. You know what, I may need to pull this up in Yahoo very quickly. Um, so overall, my sentiment on healthcare, uh, I'm definitely bullish on it. I like healthcare sector, I like healthcare stocks. Um, we can see here that four months ago, this says they have a promising prognosis, but we obviously know that may or may not be the case depending on what's in this article. Um, but to my point, you can see here in the first sentence, healthcare stocks have climbed steadily over the past decade, even accounting for a pause in 2016 when the sector got entangled in election year issues. So as you guys know, I'm a big fan of healthcare stocks. Um, a lot of my personal portfolio, actually, I, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's definitely some healthcare stocks in there. Um, the only way to find out, you know, shameless plug is to check out the informed investor. Um, but ultimately, I do like healthcare stocks because I just think that healthcare in this country is always going to be relevant um, until it gets to a point where it just gets way too bloated, um, depending on what you invest in. Um, so I think the overall health of the average American is probably, you know, below average to poor. And that's just me being honest based on people's, you know, uh, health habits and eating habits and things like that. Um, so I think there's always going to be room in healthcare, especially with new innovations against you know cancer and things like that. Uh, so let's go back into the chat here and let's see what we got. Um, Christopher Abbott says hello. How you doing, Christopher? Nice to see you, buddy. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see who else we got on here. We got about 25 people on the stream now. Thanks everybody for joining and spending some of your Saturday with me. Um, so I want to jump into a little bit more uh, current events and current topics uh, just because, uh, let's see here, I think that's relative to everyone. I do want to keep these kind of shorter. Um, so you can see here that you know Johnson & Johnson is all over the place right now. You can see stocks plunge, Johnson & Johnson tumbles, um, Johnson & Johnson asbestos reports. I mean, it's all over, you guys. Um, so we'll see here. The, uh, the Boeing, this is the one article I wanted to touch on. So Boeing opens first 737 uh, plant in China amid U.S. Sino trade war. So I thought this was pretty interesting because obviously manufacturers, you know, when they need something produced to spec, um, not necessarily cheap. I mean, Chinese manufacturing can be cheap, but if you have the right quality controls in place, you can pretty much build anything over there. I know uh, BMW motorcycles, a lot of their engines are being built over there now rather than in Germany. And this is all to cut costs. 
you know, if you just look at, you know, the average living wage for a Chinese person, there's so many, um, the labor pool is so big and the quality of life is definitely increasing. The middle class is definitely exploding in China. Um, but in terms of, you know, price to be middle class in terms of how much salary you make or how much income you make, um, I think that, you know, the Chinese standard in terms of income is a lot lower uh, than Europe or North America, for example. Um, so that's why a lot of these companies are going to China. But I thought it was pretty cool because they're um, delivering the first of his top selling 737s uh, completed at the facility in Zhushan, uh, which is about 180 miles southeast of Shanghai. And uh, you can see here that they invested $33 million last year to take a majority stake in a joint venture um, with Commercial Aircraft Corp of China to build the completion center. So that's the second piece that I wanted to touch on this is because when you work in China or when you deal with China, you're essentially dealing or do business in China, you're essentially dealing with the government. I mean, it's relatively... I guess you can call it a socialist country. You know, I guess technically it's, you know, the People's Republic of China or whatever. Um, but I guess it's still technically communist, but it's a very, you know, laissez-faire type of communism where the government definitely has a hand in things, um, but they still appreciate, you know, individual entrepreneurship to a point. Uh, for that many, you know, for that big of a population and for that many people, I mean, you got to get kind of flexible in the way you do things. And I think that it's working. I mean, their, their middle class has exploded over the past uh, 10, 15 years. So let's see, any new chats here? Um, no one really chatting in the chat group over here. So I just uh, want to start talking about things that um, I thought were relevant for the week. Um, I don't know if the stream health is any good, you guys. Can you guys see this okay? Um, it looks like I'm frozen. I don't even know if this is being recorded or, or what's going on. So if you can let me know in the chat, please do so. Uh, the chat is kind of slow, slower than it normally is. So this is leading me to believe that um, maybe the stream is not um, going through properly. Yeah, Adnan is saying weak stream. Someone's saying seems okay. Yeah, so sorry for the, the kind of choppiness of the stream so far, you guys. I just want to make sure that you guys can hear me and see me. Um, okay, so let's see what we have next on the uh, plate. I did want to talk about just what the market's been doing in general over the past couple weeks, you guys. Um, essentially, you know, Wednesday and Thursday were okay. You know, I think we dodged a couple of bullets. Um, but ultimately, you know, for the week, on Friday, I think we were down like 500 points. Uh, let me just pull up something real quick here. Okay. So let me pull up the markets here just from Yahoo. Okay, my portfolio, let's just go to the markets. Okay, we have the informed investor, we have whiteboard finance. Oops, don't wanna go in there. There it is. So you can see here, guys, let me uh, zoom in. I don't know if that does anything on the live stream. Okay, yes, it does. So S&P 500 is down almost 2% on Friday. Um, Dow 30 is down almost 2%, two, 2%, or actually it's more than 2%. NASDAQ down over two and a quarter, and the Russell 2000 down a point and a half. So I made a video the other day talking about the inverted yield curve, and typically, so if you guys haven't seen that, just go to my video list. It's literally the last video that I made. So typically, if you guys didn't see that video, what the inverted yield curve is, is essentially when um, treasury rates that are uh, of a shorter time frame are producing a better return than treasury rates of a longer time frame. So let's say if like the two years outperforming or has a higher yield uh, than the 10 year, that's what we call an inverse relationship or an inverted relationship. Uh, and ultimately, this has precluded the last nine economic recessions or the last stock market recessions um, going back to, I think, like the 70s and then the 80s. And then it did 2006, 2007. And then we had um, 2000 with the dot-com bubble. That was the early 2000s. Uh, and then we also had, um, as I mentioned, 06, 07. And now we've been in a 10-year uh, bull market and or nine and a half year bull market. So at what point does it stop you guys? At what point do you think we're gonna see a correction here? Or based on a lot of the earnings reports that we saw for quarter three, a lot of these companies were crushing earnings. So maybe this is all just, you know, um, some scare tactic for people trying to, you know, drain the swamp, if you will, in terms of uh, getting people out of the markets. 
Um, so let's see what your guys' thoughts are about that. Not sure if um, the stream is okay. Yeah, it says the stream is a bit slow. Slow, not bad. Okay. Um, Doug Whitaker is saying, so can I ask your thought on the five top healthcare stocks you like? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like all your big players, man. I mean, if you look at like um, a lot of the pharmaceutical companies that are doing well, you have a lot of like Abbott. Abbott's doing well, Johnson & Johnson. Obviously, that's a long-term hold. Um, if I have to give you top five, I mean, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to do an analysis of my own portfolio. Um, but ultimately, all the big players, um, Abbott's, the Johnson & Johnson's, just because they have so much buying power, they can acquire other smaller fish in the sea, and that's how they keep growing their business. Um, and they're also very innovative, and there's an 800-pound gorilla in the room, and they pay a good dividend. Uh, Craig Thompson says it's okay to me. Um, Doug says I like CNC. Uh, Jabu wins. Uh, your thoughts on CX? So good question. I'm glad you asked that. So let me pull up the chart here. Let's go to Google Finance. Wait, is this the one you're talking about? Semex? I thought CX was something else. Hmm. Well, if this is what you were referring to, I could have sworn CX. I was thinking of another company. Um, this one I'm definitely not familiar with, so I'm not going to pretend I am. <laughs> um, let me check the chat here to see if this is the one that you were talking to or talking about. Uh, Jose Contreras says Fox News is reporting healthcare enrollment is down for 2019. I think a lot of that has to do with just money, man. I mean, a lot of people. Um, you know, they may skip going to the doctor because they don't want to pay a $20 copay, even if they do have insurance. I know a lot of entrepreneurs, if you're a sole proprietor and you're, you don't necessarily work for a big company, um, you know, healthcare rates are ridiculous. I worked for a, a solopreneur uh, who's essentially one guy who outsourced a lot of work, and I worked for him for a summer. And he was telling me after like Obamacare or after the Affordable Care Act was passed like his insurance rates went through the roof and he's paying something crazy like you know eight nine hundred dollars a month thousand bucks a month just for health insurance so I'm lucky enough to where my wife is a nurse and her health care insurance is excellent um, so yeah just to just to give my own personal anecdotal evidence on that I think a lot of people on YouTube they talk about you know you gotta be this entrepreneur you gotta carve your own path and do this and do that there's a lot of expenses that go along with that. And sometimes people just want to work an eight to five because of the benefits. Um, there's a lot of excellent benefits that come that with working for a bigger company because they can uh, negotiate down the rates uh, because there's so many employees buying into that plan or that program. Uh, they can get better deals for everyone. Um, which brings me to another website. This has nothing to do with the uh, stock market, um, but I thought it was pretty cool. If you've never heard of this, um, speaking of buying power, this is actually called Mass Drop. Um, this was a startup company that came about a few years ago. And ultimately, if you're someone who likes any of these following topics, which pretty much covers just about everyone, um, the way I found out about this website was because I was looking for a pair of headphones. Um, oh, it won't let me go without logging in. I do have a login, I just don't feel like um, putting it up for everyone to see, to be honest. Um, but ultimately, oh, I haven't even, I wasn't even sharing my screen. Sorry, you guys. Um, so ultimately, uh, Mass Drop is kind of a, it's it's a site where they they offer certain products from manufacturers, and they have buying power because the manufacturer knows how many people are committed to buying the item before um, the item is actually you know released. So say for example, I want to buy a set of headphones that normally cost five hundred dollars. Let's just say Sennheiser headphones cost 500 bucks, right? Uh, Mass Drop is curating their own version of these headphones, which is essentially identical to whatever Sennheiser's model originally is. They call it the Mass Drop version, version of those headphones, and they have people commit to buying it. So you pay, you, you pay it just like you bought it, and the manufacturer knows exactly how many sales they're going to have, which allows them to offer the headphones at a lower price. Does that make sense? So now these five or six hundred dollar headphones can be offered on mass drop uh, for two hundred bucks. The manufacturer is winning because they know they've locked in X amount of sales through mass drop, and mass drop is winning because I'm sure there's some sort of cut or a partnership with the manufacturer, 
and the consumer is winning uh, just because they're getting you know five six hundred dollar headphones for two hundred bucks. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. If you've never used MassDrop or never heard of it, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff on there. But if you're trying to save money, don't go onto that website because there's a lot of things on there that you just want to buy. Uh, so let's let's see how the stream is doing here, you guys. Um, oops, I just opened up an incognito window. Um, okay, uh, Jose Contreras, uh, border wall stocks, who will win the contracts? I have no idea. That's a very good question. That's something I've never even considered uh, looking into. Um, and I didn't even realize that those companies that would be bidding on those um, deals or those jobs would be public companies. Um, so that's a good question. I, maybe you can enlighten the group on what you think is the best because I have no idea in that regard. Um, Doug Whitaker, uh, get into the diabetic stocks. Every day someone ends up finding out they have it. That's very true. It's because sugar is in everything. I know uh, this always turns into a quasi, you know, health podcast or a quasi health live stream. Uh, but that's just because I'm passionate about it. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's a very good point. There's definitely sugar in everything we eat, and is definitely contributing to that uh, diabetes or that uh, diabetic epidemic. Um, so let's see what else we got here, you guys. Uh, Eric Estrada, nice to see you, buddy. Thanks for joining. Uh, what are my thoughts on the Visa stock? I've noticed that every time the market is down, it doesn't really affect them. That's very true. Uh, I may have made a video last year, I believe this was either in 2017 or early 2018, that essentially went over how Visa is almost kind of like recession proof, uh, just because during times of economic boom or economic recession, people are still swiping their cards. Um, you know, to quote Dave Ramsey, he kind of says credit cards are the financial cigarette. Uh, they used to be cool. Now people are realizing that they're not that good for you, <laughs> at least for your finances. Um, but the way that I use credit cards is pretty much that, you know, I use it as points and I just pay it off like cash, right? I never carry credit card debt. Um, that's just, you know, my philosophy. But I use it for gas, you know, normal purchases, pay it off, and then I use the points for, you know, airline miles or for um, rebates or whatever. So let's take a look at uh, Visa stock. I'm glad you bought that, brought that up. Oops, that's the informed investor <laughs> uh, stream. Okay, so Visa, V. Okay, so if we take a look at the last five years of Visa, you can see that it's just been roaring up. Um, they're also getting into a lot of blockchain technology. I made a video about them, about blockchain, um, pretty much to where a lot of the fees and the transaction time is gonna be reduced significantly. Um, through the blockchain. Uh, so they're always going to be innovating, you guys. I think Visa has always been you know, ahead of the game. Uh, they're pretty much, I don't want to say the creators of the credit card. I'm not sure if they are or not, um, but they're definitely you know, the 800-pound gorilla in the room along with MasterCard and American Express, which you can see right here. Uh, I'm also a fan of PayPal. Uh, PayPal kind of changed the game with you know, instant online payments. Uh, they also own Venmo, which I use. I used it literally this morning. Um, so yeah, these three right here, until something really disrupts that industry, which I don't think is going to happen uh, anytime soon, uh, these are three stocks that you should definitely consider or take a look at. Um, so Visa, the nice thing about Visa is that they pay a dividend. It's not the highest one in the world, um, but you know it's coming in at 74 basis points. Um, and again, to answer your question, Eric, I think the reason why you know Visa is kind of quote unquote almost recession proof uh, is because that you know people are always using credit cards no matter what, and a lot of these finance companies, you know, some of them got crushed during the downturn. A lot of them kind of stayed stagnant or flat. So you can see here in 2008, early 2008, it was right around 16 bucks a share. So if you held that baby for 10 years, you know, you're almost you know making a thousand percent on this um, hold. So that's a, that's a great stock to be in, you guys. That's just my opinion. So let's see what else we have here on the chat. Okay, um, Bruno says, what do you think about Uber and Airbnb IPO in 2019? Oh, thank you, 79, 79 Wild. They said Diner's Club Card was the first to plasticize. Thank you, and I see you got the little, <laughs> what up? <laughs> uh, thank you for that fun fact, and thank you for joining us. Uh, Bruno says, what do you think about Uber and Airbnb IPO in 2019? Um, so I haven't followed these companies super closely, but I have seen that Uber is valued at $120 billion, which is just you know crazy in my opinion. Um, I do believe that both of these companies still operate at a loss. So I don't know if either of them uh, have turned a profit yet, which I think is crazy. That's kind of like getting into one of these like... Um, 
HelloFresh or, you know, those like meal delivery uh, monthly services, those boxes that people who don't know how to cook, that's who pays $10 a meal. We can literally go down the street and get a freshly cooked meal for 10 bucks anyway. Um, so ultimately, uh, it may be one of those situations to where, you know, it's not a profitable company. Maybe they turn their things around. They get this infusion of cash by going public and it allows them to scale. I just don't know if their business model Maybe once they completely eliminate the driver and go into autonomous driving to where they only need to maintain you know, the software and the vehicles themselves, maybe that's where they get that margin to where it makes them profitable. Uh, but right now with the driver model, I think that they're operating at a loss. And someone in the chat, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, maybe we can find, pull up a quick little Google search or something. But um, I guess to answer your question, if I had to pick one, I'd pick Uber just because, you know, they're always top of mind for me. Like, I don't even consider using Lyft, to be completely honest. I don't even have it on my phone. I have Uber, and I use that wherever I go. You know, uh, in October, I was in Vegas with my wife, used Uber, boom, boom, convenient, quick, easy, uh, and trustworthy. That's the biggest thing. Um, I heard someone say that when we were kids, our parents always used to tell us, you know, don't uh, get in strangers' cars or don't talk to strangers. Now we literally use our phones to summon strangers to get into their cars. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, do the valuations justify $120 billion for Uber? I don't know. I mean, it's a very scalable business, but all it takes is one municipality or one uh, federal action to say, hey, you know, Uber is no longer allowed in this uh, cab union city. You know, I think it's outlawed in a lot of cities across the world. So um, we'll see. Maybe I can glean something uh, from this. I just think that Uber would probably have to, Uber and Lyft, if they're still operating at a loss, they probably have to double their fees. And in that case, you're going to lose market share. I mean, the convenience is still there, um, but ultimately, um, you know, the price savings or the value is not there. So I may consider using a regular taxi or I may consider just driving. Uh, on my own. So I hope that answers your question on my perspective. Um, Doug Whitaker says, Uber will be delivering weed. <laughs> hey, that's very true. There's a lot of services that already do that in, on the West Coast. Um, Doug Whitaker says, we have to skip the dishes here. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you think about it, if you're like a couple, you know, or like a single guy or a bachelor or, you know, a bachelorette living on his or uh, her own, Sometimes it makes sense just to freaking eat out, man. You know, it's like, do I really want to, you know, wash dishes, clean up, you know, use this and do that and use the electricity for the dishwasher and, you know, the oven and all that stuff. It's like, I don't know. I love cooking. I'm a good cook. My wife's a great cook. Um, so it doesn't bother me. So it makes sense for us to make food. Uh, last night we made this uh, spaghetti and um, shrimp. So what I did was I took shrimp, you know, I sauteed it in garlic, oil, you know, butter, lemon, all this stuff. It was freaking delicious. Salt, pepper, paprika, uh, red, red hot chili flakes or red pepper flakes. Um, took it out so it didn't burn, but I got that nice char. Deglazed the pan with some nice red cabernet. Um, and then I cooked mushrooms, onions, you know, garlic in that sauce. And then I uh, added kind of like this, uh, like a pumpkin tomato sauce. It was delicious. I don't know if it's from like Aldi or whatever. But um, ultimately, I digress, but I don't care. It was so delicious. I'm going to talk about it anyway. And I'm sure you guys are getting hungry for lunch here. Uh, but ultimately, it was, it was delicious, you guys. And I, I told myself I'm going to stop eating carbs. I've been eating pizza. I've been eating spaghetti. I've just, like, I'm skinny fat right now, dude. Like, <laughs> I need to get this layer of skinny fat off of me. Um, and I'm probably losing everybody on this stream because they don't give a crap about my diet. <laughs> uh, Doug says, sounds delicious. Yeah, it was. It was very good. Um, Okay, so what else do we got going on here, you guys? We're almost coming up on half an hour here, and I'm running out of steam. Let me just go back to that article very quickly. Um, so a lot of people are saying that Uber and Lyft, they're kind of like, okay, who wants to um, get to the IPO first? Who wants to get you know, access to this big chunk of public cash? Um, you know, They're battling each other for dominance, all that stuff. Um, but you know, as you can see here, studies say that uh, Uber controls 60% of the market. And I think that's true. I thought it was actually even more, to be honest, um, because just from my personal experience, I'm telling you, I don't even have Lyft. Like, I don't know. I don't know the difference. I just always knew Uber kind of because they were first to market almost. Um, so you can see here, um, 37 billion in revenue. Uber also has $72 billion valuation, which is rumored, which will jump to 120 when it goes public. So there you go. That's what I was talking about. Um, let's see here. 
let's see if there if there's a way that I can type in loss and see if these guys are operating at a loss. Yeah, so loss isn't coming up. Um, profitable. So there's profit. Uh, Uber and Lyft will, will, will reveal how much they profit while gig workers fight for rights, blah, blah, blah. Um, shareholders expect profits um, as they can be demanding. Yeah, there you go. So I don't know. I'm just jumping all over the place here. I feel like this live stream was kind of choppy, to be honest with you. That that um, stream kind of messed me up. I just didn't know if you guys were seeing what I was even talking about, so I was distracted. Um, MM Cali says, any thought on Robin Hood's 3% savings and checking account? Um, I got the email because I do have a Robin Hood account. I got the email, I believe it was on like Wednesday or Thursday about that 3% savings. And then I saw a bunch of videos on YouTube um, talking about <laughs> Doug's hockey stick logo. <laughs> there you go. Um, and I got a, and I saw a bunch of uh, videos on YouTube. Let me see if I can pull one up here. Um, from other YouTubers talking about how like it's deceiving, it's distracting, blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. And I actually, I'm going to look at a house at 1 o'clock Eastern. So I'm going to look at a house in half an hour, you guys. So I do have to get out of here soon. Um, but if I go to my subscriptions, uh, can you guys even see this? Yes, you can. Oh, so you probably saw all these different like rap videos and stuff on here. I went to a Joel Santana concert in Cleveland on Thursday. And oh man, I haven't gone out in forever, you guys. I feel like an old man. But it was fun, man. I grew up, you know, listening to Dipset and the Diplomats, which is, you know, New York rap, if you guys don't know about them. And Joel's, man, he let himself go, man. He got kind of fat and he performed for like 15 minutes. It was like stupid. But we got in for free because my buddy works at the club. So no big deal. That's what I love about Cleveland, man. Like just by knowing everybody, you can get into everyone everywhere and do everything. So let's see. Who was talking about the, um, yeah, here you go. So a warning about Robinhood's 3% checking account, Robinhood checking and savings exposed. Uh, what else here? I know there's more of them. Uh, yeah, new Robinhood checking with 3% interest. I know a lot of people, oh, here you go. Here's uh, Michael J. Value Investing. I know he did a video on this. Let's go to his channel. If you don't know about him, he does a great job. So a quick little shout out to Michael. Um, the problem with Robinhood's 3% checking account. Um, so to answer your question, I don't know. I haven't done the research because my money is in a money market account with uh, Capital One. I got a lot of money in there because I'm saving up for a house. Um, so ultimately, you know, I just haven't even considered other options because I don't want to move big chunks of cash around for no reason, especially when I need it to be liquid because I will be, knock on wood, buying a house here soon. Um, trying to start a family. <laughs> Um, Eric says, thank you, Marco. I'm glad I'll have the same perspective on the Visa stock. I'll probably buy a good portion of shares just in case the market keeps going down and stay with them for the long term. My pleasure, buddy. Um, you know, I think there's definitely going to be a pullback here, you guys. I think quarter two, quarter three of 2019, we're definitely going to start to see a, a correction. It's been way too long of a bear market, or excuse me, bull market. So just be cognizant of that, you guys. Sometimes financial stocks they go flat or they go you know, down in these uh, pullbacks, you guys, because people just aren't borrowing as much money. Um, so let's see. Doug is talking about Toronto, Canada, home of the Leafs. Okay. Um, go Leafs. Uh, so are the playoffs or something going on? I, I probably sound ignorant because I don't follow hockey as much as I should. Um, but, yeah, we have I'm, – I'm in Ohio. We have Columbus. I don't really follow them. I, I'm a big soccer fan. I've watched and played soccer my whole life. Um, and to me, hockey is just soccer on ice. You know, that's essentially what it is. So, okay, I don't think it's playoffs yet. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I've been all over the place, man. I've just been swamped. I got, I'm got. i going to look at a house here in 25 minutes. I just got, my mind has been pulled in 20 different directions. So that's half an hour, you guys. I know it's been kind of all over the place. I appreciate you joining me. Um, <laughs> MDM10 says dip set. Uh, glad you didn't say you went to see Tony Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious all right you guys i want to leave it on that note um i try to bring up you know as many highlighted things as i could watch out for johnson and johnson go take a look at robin hood's three percent checking let me know next saturday what you found out about that um, i'd love to keep my finger on the pulse with you guys let me know what you guys are doing in your portfolios let me know how your portfolios are doing if you want to get some inspiration uh, and actually see my own actual portfolio uh check out um 
teachable. It's the link below. It's called the Informed Investor. That's my private membership group. Um, it's nineteen dollars and fifty cents right now a month. I do equity research reports that come from literally um, a highly reputable research group uh, here. And you guys, it's definitely what um, what Wall Street managers use. I mean, that's literally what these analysts are providing. That's their clientele. I just happen to uh, get in with them and make it make sense to allow their reports to go into my group. Um, so definitely check those out, you guys. Uh, check out West Side Gun. Have a good one. When is the house party? I'll let you know, man. Uh, I'll let you know. I would share it on. Uh, I'd share the screen. I'd show you the house that I'm going to look at right now, but. I don't want to get your hopes up. I don't want to get my hopes up. You know, you can find a bunch of stuff when, once you go through a home inspection. So I need to make a video about that, how to buy a house. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate your support. You guys are the best. I love the engagement. I love the chatting. I love everything about my fans and my audience. Um, at the end of the day, you guys, I'm just a dude that has a regular job trying to help people out with their finances. Um, I will start talking a little bit more about personal finance on these. I know last week we talked about Roth IRAs and how compound interest can help and uh, compound over time. You know, at the end of the day, you guys, it's all about living a good life, living a healthy life. After this stream, go for a run, go for a jog, go stretch if you're physically able to do so. There's some people who are disabled physically that aren't able to do so. So just, you know, don't take don't take things like that for granted, you guys. Be physically active, go for a hike, you know, enjoy nature. You know, money's great and everything, but health, happiness, family, that's what really matters. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great week ahead, and I'll see you next Saturday.